Welcome back to Tech Talk, guys. Tonight, we're gonna jump into catch cans or crank case ventilation filtration systems. This is more commonly known as in the technical world. So catch cans is what we're doing. I'm gonna jump into what they are, how they work, why you need one. So once again, I know enough about them to know I need to bring an expert along who's done, I don't know, I've probably installed about 10, 20 myself. I know shop have done 100. You've designed how many? A few. You've designed all? So yeah, so we've got Jeremy along from Directional Plus guys. So I want to know, what is a catch can? Just give me a real quick, straight up basic. What does it do? So a catch can or a pro vent? Oh, a pro vent. So a pro vent is a specifically designed system designed to separate the oil from the current case ventilation system mm -hmm. and stop that from re-entering back into the intake. A catch can does the same job, but nowhere near as well. I saw a lot of Chinese product out there, just a bit of scores and they call that a catch can. Correct. But in a general sense, they're all capturing something. Yep. The difference is? How well they work. 100%. And that changes the whole game. Absolutely. So with the ProVent system, what's what's the big deal? So when you're just looking at them, there's not a big deal about them. Like it's a, looks like your grandmother's Tupperware. Mm -hmm. uh, but so this is the bit that does all the magic. Yep. The white material on the outside just holds Holds mm -hmm. it together. Uh, inside there's a, um, it's like a stainless steel wool or mm -hmm. free free roving wool. Inside. Inside. Yep. So it's wrapped up inside the that white material. Yep. Um, and very similar to the pre-line filters, mm -hmm. it works on the uh, effect of coalescence. So the little drops get stuck to the stainless steel fibres, and then mm -hmm. once they get big enough, uh, then they drain down to the bottom. Yeah. So it's minuscule. A bit like condensation or rain, just exactly nothing until it's something that it runs down by gravity. Yep. Whew. What is how much better? Like what are we, what's the difference? So your catch can, uh, which like you would have seen on your old V8s back in the day, which is literally a can with two pipes hanging in and a filter on top of it. And a couple of vents, but nothing in them half the time. Yep. yep. Um, so they are roughly about 15 to 20%. That's it. That's it. So they catch oil. They're just not very good at it. Yeah, wow. These? These are, uh, best case scenario, 98%. That's a big difference. That's a massive, massive number difference. Now I've, race car days, built a few, just a couple of things to capture. Yep. Diesel days, now we're into 98%. Wow, that's, that's a game changer really. I mean, that's the difference between success and failure can just be a few percent. You're talking about 70% roughly. Yep. My Hilux, that Ranger, this 79, what's the difference? Yep, so this part here, or the ProVent itself, is exactly the same in all the, the kits. Yep. Uh, it's the bracket design, the hose, the fittings, is everything bespoke for that particular vehicle. Now, again, busy engine bay, it's often the nightmare. I go into yep. one, I didn't fit it day one, I fitted it day 100,000. Now I've got, all this gear in there, how much flexibility will it work? What's the plan? Yep, so if uh, you have a car that we have a kit for, but doesn't fit in your particular application, we have universal kits. Mm -hmm. uh, so the universal kits are quite unique compared to whatever else is out on the market. So mm -hmm. we uh, supply a ProVent 200. Uh, yep. We supply a heap of adapters, different length hose, drain hose, everything that you should need yep. to be able to make that fit. Yeah, I, I know of our shop, sometimes guys are, wanting them in different positions because they're going to put something there. Sometimes we need a little bit more hose, but generally we find the brackets given is pretty good. But then we've also got the universals where we can just go and get the fold, bend, and generally speaking, the universal kit gets me out of trouble. And you've got, in a universal kit, way too much gear in there, like, so I can do almost anything. <laughs> well, we try and cover all bases. Yeah, it's pretty good, but again, often sometimes it's a bit cheaper to buy this kit to suit that vehicle. Yep and get what I need. So we do put quite a bit in those universal kits and they probably are, they're on the expensive side because they're so engineered, but <laughs> yeah. I get out of all trouble. Correct. Yeah. Well, we keep a couple just for parts to get us out of trouble. <laughs> so that's why we've got a few here and an odd job that you just can't get one for, but these, and the brackets, I mean, they all come in, they're beautifully boxed, the brackets are good, everything's mint. Yeah. So, like if you want to get into it, our brackets, they're all uh, 304 stainless steel, they're all CNC. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, done by uh, cut with a fibre laser. Yeah. Um, 
that excites some people. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, all the, the folding, everything is all done by a CNC pan brake. Um, the, all the nut certs are all countersunk to make sure that the bracket on the, the Pro Van yeah. actually sits flat on the bracket, it's not sitting proud. Um, and all the nut certs for those brackets that do have nut certs, each one is individually torque tested when it's installed. So yeah. we know that they are not going to fail when someone... Yeah. Well, you've, you've, you've really engineered it. I know this is your little baby, the engineering side of them designing, but I know for a fact that they are mint. Yeah. Well, we don't want people to have problems with them. Yeah, definitely. No, you don't. So tell me, why do I need one? Why do you need one? Uh, so from the moment that you turn your car on, you create blow-by. It's, unless they change the engine design, there's something that you just cannot get around. Yeah. Um, and blow-by is the exhaust gases escaping past the, the cylinder rings, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that goes into the, the crankcase. That gas has to go somewhere. So in the old days, they used to just dump it on the road. <laughs> you used to vent it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, and now uh, the greenies, or as per uh, design rules or environmental safety, yep. um, they need to do something with it. So they now just have a hose, simply goes from the crankcase back into the air intake, and then those gases get sucked back into the engine and burnt as part of the combustion process again. Yeah. Um, so that happening, um, that oil sticks to the inside of the inlet manifold, which in itself is not that big of a problem. However, then you introduce another environmental safety device or protection device, which is the exhaust gas recirculation system, which takes soot from the exhaust system, puts it back into the inlet manifold. Makes pudding. <laughs> and makes pudding. It sure does. <laughs> um, yeah, so that soot sticks to the oil, uh, clogs up, eventually builds up, and it's pretty much like cholesterol for your engine. I've, as one of the best ways I explain it to people, What's the difference? I'm like, dude, just think of your arteries, it's exactly the same. You can have KSC and alcohol. So you can have KSC and alcohol, mix your arteries in bad shape, your heart's gonna struggle. Or forever, you can filter it by the lens of not having the bad stuff and have a good, healthy life. It's a big difference. So when should I store it? Can I put one on 100,000 Ks? Is it gonna? You can. That's gonna fix my problem? It's not going to fix your problem. So oh. it's not going to fix what is already there. So if you've got a car with a few Ks on it, best case scenario, take it to someone like yourself. I, I don't have too many Ks in this body. I'm <laughs> still young and fit, so I'm good to go. Get yeah, me one of these systems. I, I think just, I've seen my heyday. Just install this somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, take it to a mechanic, uh, mm -hmm. get the inlet manifolds ripped off, get them cleaned out, so it's back to the way that it was when you originally bought the, the vehicle. If I put this on at 98% day one, will I have to clean up the inlet manifold ever? Highly unlikely. So we've, so it's not 100%. So there is going to be some oil that gets through. Oh, so However, it's 99.9% no. Yeah. It's pretty damn good. Well, I, I, we get him in the shop, I'll just tell you straight. Like, we, we're tuning, we're cleaning, we're doing all the stuff. If the guy puts it on day one and he comes back at 80,000 Ks, and we check that manifold pressure and we check the air fuel ratios, they are mint. It's like the car's still 20, you know, just a young athlete. Versus the guy that comes in at 100,000 Ks, puts one on, it's like he's 85. It is ridiculously different. Yeah. If I, normally we, if they're 100,000, I clean them before we put it on. Like, and then it's mint for life. Yeah. But once the, I know once the fact, once the dam is done, like, so day one. Day one. Doesn't matter if you're touring or going anywhere, no. this is a big difference. This happens every time you turn your car on. Leading to my next question, why don't they come standard? Why, why doesn't someone just stick them on? So short answer is, it, is it's this. So even if a manufacturer was to, this cost them a dollar to put it on every car that goes out of their factory. How many cars does it come out of a factory in a year? Mm. That money gets, or the cost of that expense gets put onto the consumer, the, the, by the time it gets to the consumer, that's a thousand dollar piece on their car, and then that gets added to the price tag. So that's one reason. Second reason is mm -hmm. they don't have to. There's no, uh, they've used other techniques in the design of the vehicle to limit the emissions to the required level or below the required yeah. level, and they don't need to fit it. 
Yeah, if I got a five year warranty in a car and I'm buying it and it's got a 100,000 limit on it, there's no real reason for a manufacturer to do it. But if I'm keeping the car at all, at any length, do it. But if I'm only going to keep the car, let's say, a short period of time, I'm only going to keep the car 100,000 Ks, is there a benefit to my fuel economy, the engine efficiency, to put this on day one? It's kind of like inverter technology on air conditioners. The okay. longer you have it, the more money it saves you. Mm -hmm. However, it's not going to save you any money in the short term. It's going to cost you money in the short term. But over a long term, it will save you money in uh, not having your fuel efficiency reduced mm -hmm. by clogged up inlet manifolds, having to have extra servicing done. Uh, so if you're only going to keep the car for, like if it's a work year, yep. uh, it's on a lease and you're going to get rid of it in six to 12 months, don't waste your money. But if it's your pride and joy, yeah, and you want to keep it. What about when I'm buying a car? Do I go look for this? If that's on the car when I buy it or not, is that a difference? That's personal preference. I know if I was to go buy a secondhand car and I found that on the car, that would uh, lead me to believe that whoever owned that car beforehand actually cared about their car mm, uh, enough to, to spend money on it yeah. and that the rest of the car was is probably being looked after. So it's a good indicator on, on the kind of owner that owned that car before you. We, we, get, we had a lot of challenges. A lot of guys say, oh, I've serviced my car, it's super healthy. <laughs> okay, mate, you've maintained part of the car. When I see the filters on there, I'm thinking, this guy gets it. This guy understands it. All right, so servicing. And let's just talk about how often I to service it. Like, um, this is a bit of gunk out of your car, which we just drained. And it, seriously, that's what's in my engine. And this is one little teaspoon full, but it's, it's full. That's, so how that, often do I need to service that? What's yeah. going on? So, Servicing, um, depending on, on how much your engine breathes, um, absolute maximum uh, you'd want to keep it on there for is 40,000 kilometres. Mm -hmm. If you've got a heavy breather or an engine that is known for heavy breathing, i.e. Z D30s, yep. um, you would probably want to drop that down to like 20,000 kilometres. Uh, but you want to drain it as often as possible um, yep. to the most maybe 5,000 kilometers. So at least every 5,000 kilometers you want to be draining this. Because uh, the issue becomes is, uh, particularly with the ProVent 200 design, is if the oil level comes up to here, mm -hmm. it just gets sucked back into the engine. So you may as well not have this on your engine if you're not going to continue on drain it. Yeah, so from a draining perspective, how much are we holding before we need to drain it? Uh, so the, the hose, so we supply a, a meter of hose, uh, mm -hmm. which gets shortened sometimes depending on the installation. So that's your reservoir pretty much. Yep. Uh, and it holds about 100 mils uh, in that one meter length. Yep. So if you shorten that, you're gonna have to drain a little bit more often. Yeah, so if I'm doing it every 5,000 Ks, should I be seeing, and I'm draining it, we do that here, but I'm asking you, should it be consistent? Every 5,000, should I see the same height or should it be inconsistent? If you're draining it the same time or the same amount of kilometers and you're doing the same kind of driving, uh, it would be pretty consistent. So I should be worried when it's really full or nothing? If, if you've got an engine where you're having to drain it every week, you've probably got something more serious going on. And so it's helping, but it's not gonna stop a problem. It's not gonna stop a problem. And if there's nothing, but I've been seeing something, I've had another problem. Yep. It's not working at all, something's definitely changed. But um, in saying that, like when you first put these on, um, this is like a, a towel. Mm -hmm. So it will hold a certain amount of yep. uh, about 100 mils of oil in itself. So if you put one of these on and um, you drain it or you have a look at it, you try to drain it a week later, yep. likelihood of you actually seeing any oil come out of that drain is yep. almost next to none. Unless yep. of course someone poured oil in there. Uh, it will take some time for that oil to start draining off. So don't be concerned. Yeah, I mean, so every 40,000? Every 40,000. 5,000 to 10,000? Drain at five. Five, so every Maximum five. Maximum five. Max five, 40,000 replace, and we're good to go. All right, so in my day, we made a few. Now I'm seeing a whole bunch of, I don't know if it's shiny, but really shiny, attractive product. I want my engine made to shine. The best way to do it is just shiny stuff. Yep. I'm ceramic coating, I'm painting. It's Four drivers have gone from this to like the, old, the new glamour car. Why can't I have a shiny one, a custom made thing that works? Is it just that? That's the magic. 
not everything's in that. So when we first released uh, our ProVent kits, mm -hmm. uh, they were externally vented. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not saying that every time you turn your car on that it vented to atmosphere. Yeah. It meant if there was a problem with the system, i.e. there was a kink toes on the outlet side of the, the ProVent, mm -hmm. or uh, the filter or the element had not been serviced and had become yep. blocked, um, there was this wonderful little valve in the top of the lid which would open up and then vent to atmosphere mm -hmm. and then stop any damage from being done to your engine, i.e. Uh, leaking seals, blowing rocker cover gaskets, things like that. So that would relieve any pressure. Mm -hmm. But now they're internal? So now they're internal. Um, mm -hmm. Because, uh, so every other state except for Victoria. Victoria? New South Wales. New South Wales. We'll go with that. Yeah. Um, there was a little line about five sentences long that said if in any way shape or form it could vent to atmosphere it is not legal for the road mm. so that's uh, an environmental thing that's an environmental thing uh, so we went back to man and hummel and we said we have so the rules have changed the game's changed game's changed uh, so we went back to man and hummel and we said we wanted something internally vented that was going to meet the the design rules yep. that we needed to. So now instead of uh, that vent being in the lid, it's now in the bottom of the element. So mm -hmm. now uh, vents internally. Mm -hmm. So same job, uh, but instead of going to atmosphere, it just bypasses the internal yeah. element. So it keeps me environmentally happy, legal and still working. Exactly. And the only downside is it's not shiny. It's not shiny. So get the one that works, protect my engine, don't we, make it myself. We make things that work, we don't make things that look good. Or they yeah. look good. Oh, they, I mean, they look good. The, the brackets mean everything part about it, I love them. They fit snug in a little corner. Um, that's what I love them. They, they fit, they work amazingly. I know on my rig that I drain it, I see it, it's constant. It keeps happening. I know that it's just an easy tap. I've got it in my little the well there for the tire. I just drain it. It's easy access, the team like it. It's not in my way. I don't have to think about it. I do service this car almost every 5,000 Ks. Pretty much every major trip I'm doing it, so I've definitely got one on there, and the difference is healthy, peace of mind, and I can check it. Yep. I mean, and it, it's legal, everything about it. All right, just to wrap things up again, so a quick little couple of points. So, but an internally vented DIY kits yep. that you can do at home, take the professional to do, you've got them for pretty much every four-wheel drive? Pretty much every four-wheel drive. 98% filtration? 98%. Drain it every 5,000 and change the filter every roughly 40,000. Correct, yep. Simple. Very simple. Install it day one, save all the headache, no cholesterol. Happy life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> happy life forever. So that's the simplicity of it all. Just get it on there, a simple one. And what's the average sort of price we're talking? Uh, so kits range anywhere from around about the 320 to 420 mark. So under 500 bucks. Yep. I've just pulled all the cholesterol out of my arteries, all the KFC's gone. Healthy for life. I like it. I, I, honestly, we, as you can tell, we, we do a fair few here. We do like them. So, so guys, that was today. This is the ProVent system. And I absolutely can tell you, I've been using it for years. Jeremy, thank you for coming out and just explaining some of the simple basics, breaking it down. I know that 98% is worth it for me. So, guys, if you've got any question, down below in the comments, just go for it. We will answer the questions as quick as we can. If you've got any tips, anything, this is the place to do it. Comment below. Once again, this has been Tech Talk, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, bro. Thank you. See you next week, guys.